Our next presentation is Writing Cafe at PolyU, supporting writing through peer feedback and disciplinary communities of learners. The speakers are Ms. Shari Lugmani, Ms. Muskan Shah, and Mr. Ismatulo Rahimov from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Ms. Lugmani coordinates literacy-related work of the English Language Center at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. This includes collaborative integration of writing across the curriculum subjects as a graduation requirement. Her most recent undertaking is piloting a model for an online writing center. Her co-presenters, Ms. Shah and Mr. Raimov, are undergraduate students of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and have been involved in the project as peer mentors. Ms. Lukmani, Ms. Shah and Mr. Raimov, please. Okay, sorry, I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, um, can I ask Ismatullah and Muskan to say hello initially to everyone? Just turn on your cameras for a while. Hello. Muskan is here and uh, Ismatullah. Hi. Thank you Hi. very much. Hello, Ismatullah. Hello. Excellent. Okay, so let me start. Um, so we um, decided to um, develop a center, writing center uh, for the future. And as you know, that pand the pandemic and the situation in Hong Kong has pushed us into the f thinking about the future, perhaps earlier than we would have done. Um, so when we were thinking of designing a, a writing center, and we have been do, doing that for quite a few years, um, thinking of developing a writing center at PolyU, um, the, the recent events spurred this on because we realized how effective uh, writing support can be uh, when delivered online. And so that spurred us. And um, in addition to that, we, we decided that um, students need to be part of communities of learners because together with all the other developments, I think what we have experienced in the last few years is how important online com communities are. Uh, we join different online communities to meet our different needs and so do our students. So let me start by talking about this project, which was funded by the faculty reserve, which is which was previously called the Dean's Reserve. So I should acknowledge um, my faculty of humanities for funding this project. Um, and it um, aims to develop and pilot a model of writing center that is meant for undergraduate students to obtain disciplinary content as well as genre and language support. Um, uh, and also the important part is that they are not just a one-off, uh, it's not just one-off support, it is a staged support that develops their writing throughout the semester. Um, so there are three supporting pillars of this uh, model. Uh, the most important is the community of learners. Um, then we employ peer feedback on disciplinary writing because we think that students' peers from their disciplines are, are able to give more uh, targeted and more relevant feedback uh, when it comes to the content. Um, also, online platform is a third supporting pillar where we think that both synchronous and asynchronous uh, um, help can be given to students on their writing. You can see that um, the community of learners um, or community of inquiry within the disciplines includes capable trained students as peer mentors. Uh, it includes ELC, English Language Center instructors as senior writing consultants and peer mentor trainers. Of course, it includes subject teachers with whom we collaborate right at the beginning 
and it includes the most important stakeholders of our community, the undergraduate students, uh, also English writing requirement students, senior year students, all students, in fact, who are working on their first degree at the moment at PolyU. And we call this, we have decided to call this a writing cafe uh, at PolyU. Uh, where students um, come together online. And the, they have a shared objective uh, to construct knowledge. The emphasis is on the learning process and diversity of expertise. So expertise comes from the peer mentors, bringing in their own um, strengths from their discipline and experience. And of course, uh, there are different methods for sharing knowledge um, online that I'll be talking about soon. So you can see that there are multiple prongs that support this community of learners. There is the Teams platform. And as I mentioned earlier, we have social gatherings online. It begins with a, with a, with a social gathering. And then there are group and individual meetings. There is asynchronous discussion and reflective interviews. There is post-session feedback that uh, mentors and mentees complete after every session. And also we meet with mentors from time to time to find out how they are doing and to answer their questions whenever they ask. So how did we do that? We developed, um, the, at first we explored the various uh, writing center models. We communicated with Hong Kong U. Hong Kong UST, Baptist U, City U, Chinese U. We explored their models. We talked to three of them in greater detail. And uh, we then um, also did uh, research and uh, designed a model that was fit for our purposes um, at PolyU. And our external consultant, Professor Terry Myers Zawacki, who is an expert in this area, has been con continuously helping us. We developed a training package and materials to engage with disciplinary writing. And uh, we piloted the model with peer mentors um, and uh, in the second semester, uh, just before summer and undergraduate mentees from matching disciplines. So our model matches disciplines with the expertise or experience of the peer mentors. Uh, so as you can see, our first community of learners uh, is four peer mentors, um, 40 mentees, uh, ELC teachers as senior writing consultants, subject leaders, and Professor Terry Meyer Zawacki. And um, we uh, recruited the peer mentors uh, based on a criteria. They appeared in a writing test, and then they did half an hour interview. We develop protocols to, for students to engage with uh, mentees in the mentoring sessions. We develop guidelines and pass, uh, from the disciplines and gave them to mentors. Uh, there were 51 mentees in, 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 in registered because we um, catered for um, mentees who may not attend. Um, and as, you, as I mentioned earlier, they were matched. Um, the uh, model was the stages were like this. Um, the uh, at first we met uh, uh, ELC this mentee sorry mentors met us, the supervisors and they got an understanding of the assignments that they'll be supporting. Then they met their mentees uh, as a synchronous session. Uh, it was called meet and greet session. Then they met in another session where they gave assignment orientation. Uh, and brainstormed with their students about their assignment. Uh, the, most of their mentees, we were hoping that they'll be working on the same assignment. Apart from some examples, it was the case. So one mentee was supporting multiple students working on the same assignment. Peer mentors uh, then meet, uh, can ask us questions or meet us to discuss the submitted draft. Very often, it was a cry for help sometimes as to how do I respond to this uh, very scientific text, etc. Uh, or they could just set up a meeting with us. Then they met their students for 30 minutes. Um, and we were hoping that they'll meet their students twice. Uh, but again, it was when it uh, actual pilot happened, this was sometimes once a longer meeting only once. Um, rather than two drafts. And then we met at the end 
and uh, peer mentors reflected on their experience. Uh, we also have feedback from each of the sessions that the mentors and mentees conducted. Okay, so this is the peer feedback model and I, uh, various aspects. I won't go through it again. I think I've been explaining this earlier. Um, and these are the subjects we engaged. Um, they represented um, all four disciplines, physical science, mathematics, um, social science, life science, and arts and humanities. Um, and they, these subjects uh, were invited to take part and there, were, there should have been 10 students from each of them, but sometimes we had more interest. For example, AMA, we had 14 students who were interested and they registered. Um, so this was, in the, uh, this data was gathered before we got to number 51. So at that time we had 46. Year fours, and you can see that we have more students from year one and year four. Uh, probably year one students are uh, kind of worried about their assignments and year four students probably are working on their final year projects or they, they are about to leave. So they are more worried. And there were fewer students from year three, uh, year two and year three. Um, also, we developed a consolidated writing platform and uh, the, there were two major teams, uh, two types of teams. So writing cafe was for mentors and us. So we trained them there, we communicated with them there, we were often there present to help our mentors. And then each of the mentors had their individual teams where they met their students and students submitted their drafts and accessed resources. Also that's where they gave and received feedback and completed their post-session surveys as well. Um, so um, again, Microsoft Teams, uh, we found it to be the most appropriate um, platform. Uh, the, they, they could message each other, collaborate with each other. There were live meetings, synchronous feedback, asynchronous communication, uh, group chat. It also is excellent for sharing uh, files uh, and uh, because PolyU provides senior, uh, single sign-on services, um, it was smooth for students and safe. Um, and also it has better mobile uh, capability. Now is the time for us to meet our mentors. So uh, let's see who wants to come first. Is it uh, Muskan who wanna come first? Sure, sure. Okay, you can ask me to change the slides as we go along, okay? Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so hello everyone. Thank you for having me here today and thank you, Ms. Shari, again for this opportunity. So, first of all, um, um, before I go into sharing my experience, I'll uh, introduce a bit about my role as the peer mentor and how I help the mentees as well. So to begin with, we obviously started with um, introducing ourselves to them. And here are some basic statistics about my, my role. So we started off with around 10 to 11 mentees. However, um, I found that through the process, only four were really responsive, even though both us as the peer mentors and Ms. Shari as our supervisor, we tried to contact them, but they did not um, seem to respond back. And this was one of the challenges that we faced, which I'll talk about in more detail later on. So back to the statistics, they submitted around one draft each. Um, and so I was dealing with final year students. And so um, they had long drafts around 2000 words. And even though we encouraged them to submit smaller words, they were really concerned about their whole structure and everything. So I was okay to help them with formatting the whole thing, understanding how they can really uh, do the entire abstract literature review and so on. And so this was basically my role. And over here, I've done a little breakdown of um, the different subjects that I helped out with. So it was definitely a very testing period where I initially I had to learn all the different um, basis of the, all the different subjects because um, I myself, I'm from a fashion background. So that's more focused on fashion business. And over here, it, it was a lot of science and even design as well. 
So it took me a while to, um, in my first talk with them, it took me a while to understand what they were doing and to um, consolidate what they required. So this was definitely an experience for me, um, but it was, I would say in a more advantageous position because it helped me to refresh from just fashion. And so it gave me a new perspective to help them as well. And so my role overall was basically providing general feedback. It could be with grammar, it could be with structure, anything they were particularly struggling with. So the key was that they were in the center and like they understood that we were here to help them and we weren't going to dictate what they were doing or like tell them that this is the only way that they could improve. So that was the key thing to start with the positives for them. And then also we learned during our training sessions as peer mentors, that was key to encourage reflection because it's not fun and the students don't feel helped when we just give them directly the solutions to their work. And so um, during my progresses, my consultations with each student, I made sure that I was asking them to reflect first on their own work. And then I would give them the feedback that I had after reading their work. So that way we were both on the same level and they both, um, they also feel included as I was giving them their feedback. And so it was also key that I followed up constantly with them. However, this was uh, one of the challenges, as I mentioned, and it proved to be a bit difficult. So I'll explain that also a bit later. And, um, and the key was also to adapt that I was uh, adapting my way of communication and that it wasn't just all about how I spoke to them, but making sure that they felt comfortable with me because sometimes some of them struggled maybe in um, speaking to me in English. So they wanted some help with their peers um, joining the call as well. So I made sure that each person was trying their best to feel comfortable and that I would listen to their issues and adapt that way. So this was uh, overall my role. And now I'll, in the next slide, please, I'll go into um, more detail about my experience in this whole writing cafe. So I'll start off with the overall sense. It was definitely a very empowering experience because this was, uh, I could say, one of the first times where I got to be kind of in the shoes of being a teacher or a professor and trying to give feedback and to try and understand what each student really wants rather than just giving what I think is correct. And so it really helped with my confidence as well, because I wouldn't see myself as giving advice to every person and like them having to take it because I'm still a student learning as well. And so that's why it really helped me build my confidence this way to be able to be in a position where I was providing feedback to other students. And it was also quite fulfilling to see some visible change in their work because it was really great that I could have face-to-face um, -face calls with them, even though at the moment it was online, but in the future, we will continue to try to do it face-to-face -face as well. But it really did help for them to be there and listening to what I said and me listening to what they were worried about and then seeing that they were writing notes and taking all of that down. And with one student, for example, I got to have two consultations with her. So I could see the visible change that she had taken the feedback and grown from it. So that was really a great experience to see that. And the other thing that I really liked about this whole cafe was how we could give a multi-perspective um, approach because we as students not only know the student perspective, but now we have been trained in slightly understanding the teacher's perspective as well. And so we were in a position to try and balance both of these things. And I think that was very helpful because often we know students are maybe not comfortable with professors or maybe a bit scared about trying to express themselves and they lack a bit of confidence in doing that with teachers. So my main aim was that I was trying to ensure I was on the same level as them and making sure that they didn't feel as I was a teacher just trying to give them a lecture or a feedback on their work, but that they were also teaching me some things. So that was something that I was really, really trying to improve through this writing cafe. And that was a really great thing to have both the perspectives. And then finally, as I mentioned, it was quite refreshing because it's also as students, it's also a great break. And as teachers, I'm sure it's a great break to try and like move around different subjects and understand new things because we're always learning from different people. So I always, I try to go into the writing cafe and this is what we were trained to do as well is that we're not only there as teachers, but we're also there to learn. And that really helped to develop this uh, reflective kind of relationship with the students. So I think that would be a really big part of my experience. 
And now when we come to some improvements, so some of the challenges that we face. So first challenge, as I mentioned, was that um, making sure that they were engaged. So a lot of students over the course of a few months started to drop out. This could be of many reasons. Maybe they were too busy as I had the final year students, they were extra busy. So that could be one reason or they were just not comfortable or they didn't feel it as engaging enough. So initially in the, my first meet and greet call, I did try and play some icebreaker games with them. Um, and I did during each consultation in some of the photos, screenshots above, you may be able to see, I tried to make sure that like, the students were also giving their own checklist. So it was interactive and it wasn't just me telling them what to do. So you will see in the photos that on the left um, with a student I had call on, I asked her to make her own checklist while we were on call. And then I showed her my checklist. So I had already prepared my checklist from before, but I did not reveal it to her because I wanted her to reflect on her work first. And so that way, by the end of the call, we had around two checklists to both compare and look at. And so this did prove a challenge at times when some of the students were not keen on interacting. So I would say one solution that I thought about that if I continue this, I would make sure that maybe in the calls beside just interaction, I would think of what type of interaction to so maybe make it more fun rather than make them put them on the spot and ask them to just give me their feedback immediately. So I think that would be a new approach for the solution. In challenge two, I also want to create a community feeling because I think as peer mentors, we could have um, relied on each other for help, but we didn't know each other well enough. So it was harder for us to connect as well and get to know each other. So maybe um, as a step when we start our new round, the first step would be for peer mentors to just talk to each other whether it be online or face to face, but we get to know each other maybe in one or two sessions. And that way we're more like friends and able to consult each other for help. And then finally, my last challenge would be there may be some lack of feedback um, for us as a whole. And this might be due to the online method. It was a bit difficult for everyone to keep connected. So we as peer mentors weren't able to receive feedback all the time. Um, even though some students, mentees did fill out some feedback forms, we did not have access at first to see them. So it was difficult to know if we were stagnating or we were actually developing as the months went on. So this would one, be one thing that I would um, request for or try and uh, try and make sure that we have is that some maybe monthly feedback so that we know that through each consultation, we're actually improving. And it's not just, um, we're not just there to say things and then leave, but we're actually developing as well. So I think these would be the key things that I would improve, but overall, as mentioned, it was a very empowering and fulfilling experience. So that is what I have to share. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Khan. Um, um, can I invite um, uh, Ismatullah? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Smithila. Yes. Uh, yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much, Ms. Shadi, for inviting us. And I'm glad to be able to share my experience as a peer mentor today. Uh, I had. Uh, I am somebody who's an English major. I'm somebody who's thinking to become an English teacher in Hong Kong, probably if I'm not gonna go into 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 politics. Uh, so having this experience as teaching. Uh, this is teaching, right? This is obviously peer, this is peer mentoring, but it was, it just reinforced uh, my love of teaching so much because I just love making things easier for people to understand. And when you just, uh, uh, when I'm discussing a certain, uh, a certain paper with somebody and I see clearly that they're improving, it, it just, uh, it lights up your heart. I, I personally, for me, so. I, uh, out of the 14 students that I was assigned, I was able to have two sessions, uh, two of the planned sessions, but only eight of them. But still, I think out, uh, compared to, uh, compared to the general, uh, to, to the general, uh, compared to how many people actually attended, I think eight people was quite a lot. So we had uh, 16 sessions overall. And uh, actually, instead of having two, uh, because it was hard to get, uh, all of them to meet uh, uh, together because uh, and the, they had different schedules and it was just hard to, to meet. Uh, I, I had conducted an individual session of 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I, I conducted an individual session of 15, 20 minutes for each of them even before the two sessions. So that's something like an icebreaker that Muskan did because I really wanted to 
uh, get get the students to understand that I am just a student like them who happens to be a year three and they're year one. And I have more experience and I have some some two cents to share and to help them get a better grade. So uh, yes, I was helping them with two papers, uh, the two final papers, one for introduction to social work. And then pr probably because they just saw how, how uh, I guess, lovely it was that somebody was helping them with their essay. They, they asked me if I could help them with the advanced English reading and writing skills in class as well, which wasn't planned. But yeah, I, was, I helped some of them of those essays as well. And uh, the social work essays were around 2,500 words in general. And the advanced English reading and writing was 1,000 words in general. And uh, yeah, I, when I started talking to them, I usually offered four types of help. Um, I said, uh, you know, I can, because we have two sessions, you can choose what we do. For example, you could choose researching and planning for session one. And then for session two, I can help you with your draft. But as we probably can assume, because there are so many students are deadline fighters, uh, they, uh, I think presentation disappeared. Uh, my connection just disappeared, sorry. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Can you uh, see it now? Hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, so there were four types of help that I generally provided, but as you can probably assume, uh, because so many students are deadline fighters and they're year one students who don't have really great planning skills for university yet, because the workload of university is very different from high school. Uh, most of them, they, they would wait until it's like two weeks before the deadline. And I have all of my deadlines as well. And it's then when everybody says, okay, I'm ready to meet for draft one. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to follow up with them. It's really hard to get them to meet. And it's really important as, as, as I found to clear up expectations and to make them understand that, you know, I am not your professor who's going to grade you on this. So you don't have to write up your essay and meet me at this time. So I made sure that they realized that, which is why sometimes even if they had written like three paragraphs when it was two weeks to the deadline, they would still meet me and they would, they would go like, okay, so I didn't have the time, didn't have the energy. I don't know what to do. I wish I had not chosen draft one, but I wish I had chosen researching help. Like, please help me. And then we'll discuss and then they would go like, okay, thank you so much. And yeah, as I just said, uh, this was a, a great experience for me because personally, because I had two, two sessions with each of the eight students, I was able to, and because I was helping them with two different essays as well, uh, social work and in, uh, English, there was one student, for example, Harry, who I helped with social work, and he had this problem of, he had this problem of trying to write elaborate sentences and elaborate sentence structures when it was way more important for him to get his point across by being simple. But because he was he wanted to get a better grade because he wanted to show that he knows English, he was trying too hard to do that. And uh, you know, I just used plenty of humor. I made I I made it I explained to him that imagine if a kid is talking to you and a kid is saying, okay, I go to school, right? The simplest structure, the simplest words. And then suddenly and then suddenly he says, I go to school, and then supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, you know, something that counts out like that. Uh, any professor, that would be out of place and he would notice it, which is why it's more important that you get your paint or point across by being simple. And yeah, I, I tried to use humor. And obviously, because these were our peers, the report was so much easier to build. And yes, there were challenges, but uh, we're, we have some ideas, as Muskan already mentioned of how to fix them in the next semester when we'll be helping them again. And two of the challenges that were specific to me probably is getting them all to meet together, which is why I had to go out of my way to spend my own time to meet each of them individually for 10, 15 minutes. But I think, I think that paid off. Uh, I think that paid off because they were all way more, uh, uh, way more receptive to my feedback and way more accommodating of, of, of my feedback. Uh, and another challenge was getting them to work early on. As I said, so many of them are deadline fighters and so many of them don't have the planning skills. So many of them are unaware of the workload of university and what is expected of them to get a good grade. So 
the two, the two things that I'm planning to solve these challenges is offering more help in the early stages. So for example, because most of them said draft one, I didn't have the experience. I said, okay, draft one, that, that let it be draft one. But actually they needed more help in the researching and planning and outlining because once they have that ready, it'd be so much easier for them to just start writing. And another thing is because I'm an English major and not a social work major, I really needed the uh, subject specific technical knowledge needed because in their essays, they had to compare different uh, models in social work to the PIE and POI and whatever. And it was, I just needed to learn that. Um, before, I, I was thankfully able to do that because, some of, because of the guidelines that were provided by, by the ELC, but it's still, it's still important that you have that knowledge. Uh, that's about it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I think we have overrun a little bit, but still, if you have any, I will skip the rest of the slides. Uh, if you have any questions, um, please ask me or Ismatullah or um, Muskan.